This is a quick introduction to SysRev Analytics. SysRev Analytics are tools that are available for SysRev Pro and Team Pro accounts. Uh, you can demo them at the Encelica Manchaferin project, uh, which you can see on your featured projects page after you log in. So if you go to the Manchaferin project, you'll be able to read all about this project that we set up for analyzing uh, medical abstracts about the supplement Manchaferin, sorry, the extract uh, Manch Manchaferin. Um, and you can look at all this information yourself. What we're going to focus on is what you can do with analytics. So in this project, 292 articles were reviewed, and there were about four different reviewers, one of whom did the majority of the work. In analytics, we can start looking at how, the, how concordant those reviewers were. In other words, how often they agreed with each other and how often they disagreed with each other about different Boolean labels. Uh, so the Manchafarian project has two Boolean labels. One of them is an inclusion label, which marks an article as meant to be included in the set or not included in the set. And the other one tracks whether or not the abstract associates, uh, uh, associates a positive effect or a negative effect uh, with Manchafarian. And you can see here, let me zoom in a little bit for you. Um, you can see that the inclusion effect was mostly concordant, uh, conclusion, inclusion label, and the positive effect label was also mostly concordant. You get percentages for that by clicking the percent button. You see that inclusion is about 90% concordant. Positive effect is about 97% concordant. We can click on one of those labels. Let's choose include to see how concordant each of our reviewers were. And so if we switch this over to percent, you can see immediately Tom is highly discordant, but he only performed one article. So these names are ordered in order of the number of articles that were actually labeled for inclusion. Uh, so if we go back to percent, we can see that M. Dong Ying uh, is about 89% concordant. And uh, if we look at her count, she's done the majority of the work. RFA Aliani was actually 100% concordant. So what that means is that whenever another reviewer reviewed the same article that RFA Aliani reviewed, uh, they always agreed with RFA Aliani about, the, about whether or not the article should be included. If we switch over to positive effect, we can see that uh, these concordance numbers are, are, are much better, um, and that M. Dong Ying had two articles that were discordant. 63 articles were concordant. We can dig even farther to see exactly who uh, M. Dong Ying was discordant with. So we, sh we see she had two articles where she was discordant, where she disagreed with her paired reviewer about, the, about whether the article associated a positive effect with, with Mangiferin or not. And we can see down here that those two uh, users, I can even make it more clear, uh, were CLM Albon and TJ that she disagreed with. <clears throat> and we can do the same thing for inclusion and make it even clearer. And you see that she disagreed with TJ and CLM Albon uh, the most. So that's concordance. Uh, this works for any number of Boolean labels that you have in your project, and it lets you keep track of whether or not your uh, reviewers understand the tasks that they've, they've been assigned and whether or not your labels are well-defined. Uh, frequently, the reason a reviewer is doing poorly is because there are multiple interpretations of the, of the tasks that you've defined. The other tool we have in analytics is the labels tool. Uh, and labels actually fall, covers all all Boolean labels, as well as all uh, categorical labels. So here you have include, it's either true or false. Administration method can be ingested, not given intraperitoneal, other intravenous, intraduodenal, or skin contact. There are a lot of options in the label counts uh, uh, analytics workflow. Uh, we can do, uh, just starting at the top, we can select a counting method. So the counting method is either every answer or once per article. Every answer is going to is going to uh, actually just count every time a user labeled the the given label answer. Uh, what that means is that usually every article has two reviewers. Uh, so if your project is complete, then you'll actually have two times more label answers uh, than you'll have articles. Um, so that can be useful if you're just trying to track how often different reviewers are give are assigning different answers uh, to to different articles. Get an idea of those distributions. Or you can go to once per article, which is going to take the, the average label answer on an article. <clears throat> now, so if all the reviewers on an article said true, it would receive a, a count of one. Uh, if one of them said true and one of them said false, both, would, both of them would get a count of one half. 
Okay, uh, we can switch to a dynamic scale or a static scale. A dynamic scale is going to keep uh, the, the um, bars large. A static scale allows you to compare counts um, between different option types. So we go to every answer, we can see that in every answer, the bars are larger than once per article. You can filter by concordance type. If you're only interested in the answers that were concordant, uh, you can see that 66 articles have a concordant um, inclusion equals true, and 41 have a concordant inclusion equals false, 41. <clears throat> you can select specific users or groups of users. Uh, so if we select Emma Dong Ying, we can look at all her concordant answers. Uh, we could look at RFI A. Eliani, look at her concordant answers. We go to dynamic, we can make that a little bit larger. Switch back to static. And you can see some users don't have all that many answers. Okay, uh, and then you can actually filter by label answer. Uh, so what that means is if I select true here, uh, you're gonna see all of the all of the counts where uh, a user labeled the article as inclusion equals true. Um, so I switch this over to dynamic. Uh, maybe I'm interested in seeing what the counts look like when uh, the the uh, organ target was, um, let's do kidney. So we down to four articles, all, 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 there were five articles that had an inclusion here and uh, you have a positive effect of true with all of those articles as well. Okay. So if I go to articles, I can see that I've, I filtered these articles down to the ones that have a confirmed answer of organ kidney and have a label answer from user HJS or M Donging or RFA Aliani. Um, so if I look at one of these, or actually if I go back and look at the labels, what I should see is that for each of these, the organ includes kidney. And I should see that either HJS, M Donging or RFA Aliani is one of the reviewers on each of these articles. So you can see, uh, sure enough, M Donging labeled this one as kidney and she's a reviewer on this article. Okay, so those are the analytics workflows. Um, if you have feedback, we'd love to hear it. You can go to the feedback tab and provide your feedback and we'll certainly read that and add it to our issue list. And uh, yeah, you can actually check this project out yourself, play around with the analytics tool. If you go to this URL, uh, sysrev.com slash o slash two slash p, slash 21696, and I'll put that in the description below the YouTube video. Um, hopefully this helps you decide whether you want to get Cicero Pro or Cicero Team Pro. Uh, to do that, you just go to pricing. If you stay on free, uh, you won't have access to analytics, but if you go to Pro or Team Pro, you'll have access to analytics. Okay, thank you.